Today we have to listen Ariya Vasa and Nivarana. Ariya Vasa, the abode of noble ones and mental hindrances, Nivarana. Ariya Vasa, Ariya means individual who has attained one of eight stages of enlightenment, no matter whether human or celestial, male or female, lay or monastic. <clears throat> and our sir, oh, Ariya, Sotabadi Megatam, Sagadagami Megatam, Sagadagami Megatam, and Arata Palatan, Arata Megatam. Sotabadi individual, Sagadagami Mega individual, and Nagami Mega individual, and Arata Mega individual, four mega person. And after attaining Mega, immediately fruition, fruition. So Sotabadi fruition individual, Sagaragami fruition individual, and Nagami fruition individual, and Arhata fruition individual. So eight individuals because eight stages of enlightenment. And awasa means residence or abode. So riyawasa means the abode of noble ones. All the bodhas and noble ones, riyas in the past, Dwelt in that area was that abode. Before Gautama Buddha, they appeared Kasaba Buddha. Before Kasaba Buddha, Konagamana Buddha. Before Konagamana Buddhas. Kakusanda Buddha, before that, Visavu Buddha, before that, Sikhi Buddha, before that, Vipassi Buddhas. So all the Buddhas and noble ones in the past dwelled in that Riyawasa. And in the same way, our Gautama Buddha and his noble disciple have been dwelling in that Riyawasa. In the same way, the future Buddhas, Aramitya Buddha and his disciple, We dwell in that area was a noble abode. So area was a refers to important qualities required to become a noble one. In other words, each and every noble one dwells in area was a, which is well guarded from the dangers of torturous cycle of suffering, torturous cycle of uh, births and death, samsara. So the abode of noble ones, Riyawasa, provides us refuge from all kinds of potential danger in samsara. 
to help us attain such great refuge, the Lord Buddha delivered this Ariyavasa discourse. So today, on behalf of the Buddha, we have to listen, we have to deliver this sutta, keeping it in mind, we all have to listen to this talk attentively. So there are some headings in this sutta, First, to abandon five factors and to be endowed with six factors and one gut. Etc. Among these headings, the first one we need to implement is the development of mindfulness. A single God, be mindful of whatever manifests, be thus guarded by, always with mindfulness. <coughs> so for example, in the world, very important people like wealthy businessmen and high rank official have security guards at their houses, especially kings with absolute power, keep many bodyguards around them at all time. As for national security, the much greater number of security guards are deployed all around the country. <coughs> so there is a guard at the abode of noble ones to explain what a single God means, Lord Buddha poses a question before he gives answer as uh, he gives answers. The question is Katincha Bekwe Beku Eka Rekohoti. Bekus, how is a Beku endowed with a single God? And Buddha answered that question. Ida bekwe beku, satara kena chetasa, samana kadohoti. Bekus, a bekus is endowed with the mind guarded by mindfulness. The God at the abode of noble ones is mindfulness. If you want to dwell that abode of noble ones, you need to have your mind guarded by mindfulness. In this sense, the Buddha said, a bhikkhus is endowed all types of mind guarded by mindfulness. It is only an arhan, a fully enlightened person, who can be endowed with perfect mindfulness. Arhan is mindful of whatever he does physically, verbally or mentally. So the minds of Arahan is well guarded by mindfulness. 
Being mindful constantly, Arahan never does anything bad. Arahan never speaks anything wrong. Arahan never does harmful to others. Arahan never think of anything sinful. That is why Arahan is praised in this way. Tasa chara toche wa deita tocha sota sacha chagra sacha satata samita nyana dasana bichu patita. Whether going, standing, sleeping, or awakening, he is endowed with knowledge and vision. So can you notice in this Pali words, Sutasa, the, this quotation includes when sleeping, he is endowed with knowledge and vision. But it is rather impossible. And it may refer to his mindfulness just before falling asleep and immediately after waking up. When Arahan totally falls asleep, it is impossible for mindfulness or insight to arise for Arahan. For sure, it does not mean that. In any case, we should know that Arahan always has his thoughts guarded by mindfulness, no matter whatever he is doing, speaking, or thinking of. The mindfulness does not suddenly lead to the full enlightenment, Rata Mega, like something that suddenly appears from the sky, like something that suddenly appears out of nowhere, but it gradually develops to its peak. Arahans attain perfect mindfulness. Thanks to the mindfulness he had developed as an anagami. In the same way, an anagami's mindfulness is almost perfect. But that is also attributed to the mindfulness he had developed as sagatagami. And again, Sagaragami's mindfulness must also be credited to the mindfulness developed as a Sotapanna. Of course, Sotapanna's mindfulness is very remarkable in comparison with that of Putujana, common people. Thanks to such significant mindfulness, a Sotapanna's mental defilements are never strong enough to commit evil deeds that can lead him to woeful states. Yes, Sotapanna still has certain kinds of kilesa, mental defilements. Sotapanna still have passion, kamaraga, sensual desire. Sotapanna still has aversion, jabada, delusion, moha, and conceit, mana, and so on. But the mental defilements of Sotapanna's are never strong enough to commit evil deeds of killing, stealing, etc.
They decrease both in degree and frequency because Sotapanna has a mind guarded by powerful mindfulness. If you are a Vipassana meditator, if you practice diligently, you can realize it from your own experience. But if you are not, then you have to accept it by faith. At least you need to have faith in what the Buddha himself spoke in praise of Sotapanna. The Buddha said that a Sotapanna never does any akusala, demerits that can lead to woeful states. Yogis have practiced mindfulness, and so it is sure that what the Buddha said about Sotapanna is true. So if you want to realize this fact from your own experience, we have to encourage you to put effort in the development of mindfulness. If you develop mindfulness to a remarkable extent, you will realize how well it acts in nature as a vigilant gut. And to explain more, Sotapanna would crave for an object if desirable. He would be advised against it if undesirable objects, because Sotapanna is not yet free from greed and hatred, but Sotapanna always becomes mindful of such unwholesome states and keeps them under control before they become violent. In this way, the defilements would lose their momentum and never go violent, unlike in the case of uh, Pudujana, common people. <coughs> For sure, Sotapanna would be lustful, he would be angry occasionally. But these mental defilements are never strong enough to make him capable of killing, stealing, telling lie, telling a lie harmful to others' well being. So the Buddha said, that Sotapanna does not commit any evil deeds that can lead him to woeful states, apaya gamaniya akusala, evil deeds that can lead to woeful states he never commit. So we need to get security, we need to get God, special God. We need to be guarded all, at all time so that no mental defilements, no mental enemy can invade our mind. For this purpose, all we need to do is just to be mindful of phenomena manifested at the six sense doors by noting all our sensorial reaction. 
So we have to note every seeing. If you really pay attention, if you have advanced level in Vipassana, you can see layer by layer of images. Hearing very clear, every hearing you need to be mindful. They just wearing very, very immediately, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking accordingly. You need to be mindful of everything. So here, touching can be experienced on every parts of the body or at every time you make a move. Stretching, bending, etc. You can be aware of every touching. And thinking covers a wide range of thoughts that come nonstop, except the time you totally fall asleep. Of course, some of the thoughts are quite wholesome, kusala, but most of them are not wholesome, akusala. So it is very important to be mindful of every thought so that your mind can be well guarded against the mental defilements. Thieves or robbers cannot attack a house if well protected by security guards. In the same way, if the mind is well guarded by mindfulness, it cannot be severely attacked by mental defilements. The mindfulness known as uh, the single guard can be developed gradually, just like step-by-step -step lessons for a school boy. The boy has to start his lesson with alphabets, A, B, C. It is impossible for the school boy who read a passage right away on his first day of school. He has to work hard to remember what each and every alphabet looks like and how to draw them. And then he has to learn how alphabets get combined into words. Having thus learned step by step, schoolboy becomes capable of reading the whole sentence or paragraphs without thinking about alphabets or spelling uh, spellings of words. <coughs> In the same way, You have to be mindful so that you, you, uh, you make gradual progress in the practice. In the beginning, your mindfulness is not very strong. You know the rising and falling of the domain when your concentration is weak. Only just you can capture the concept Belly moving and stretching, bending of the limbs. You see only the, the limbs moving. But if you be more mindful, you can capture the Nama Rupa, true nature of the phenomena. Now let's see how yogi make gradual progress in the practice of walking meditation. When he or she becomes mindful more and more.
In the beginning, you make note when walking, stepping, stepping, and left, right, left, right. And you pay attention to that walking without thinking. After a few hours or after a day or two of, uh, two of your walking meditation, you are able to be mindful of two occurrences, stepping and putting down the food. And you try to be mindful of two stages in the step, stepping, putting down, stepping, putting down. Then you try to be mindful of three stages, lifting the foot, pushing the foot forward, and putting the foot down. Later, you become more to be mindful of four stages in each step, lifting the foot, moving it forward, putting it down, and pressing the foot on the ground. So you would be, you would become to be completely mindful and to make a mental note of these four stages of your foot's movement, lifting, moving forward, putting down, pressing the ground. So Yogi wants to pay closer attention to the movements of lifting, moving forward, putting down and pressing the ground. You can penetrate more and more and you can be truly mindful and fully aware of these movements. All those yogi pay close attention. Yogi may not see all the movements and stages clearly in the beginning. The stages may not yet be well defined in your mind and they may seem to continue only one continuous movement. But when you try to be mindful more and more, your concentration grows stronger and you will observe more and more clearly these different stages in one step. The four stages at least will be easier to distinguish. You will know distantly the lifting movement, The lifting movement is not mixed with moving forward movement. And you will know that moving forward movement is not mixed with either the lifting movement and the putting down movement. And then you will understand all movements clearly and distantly. So whatever you are mindful and aware of, will be very clear in your minds because you diligently mindful. And when you carry on the practice, you will observe much more. When you lift the food, you will experience the lightness when you push the foot forward, you will notice the movement from one place to another. And when you put the foot down, you will feel the heaviness of the foot because the foot becomes heavier and heavier 
as this goes down. And when you put the foot on the ground, you will feel the touch of the heel of the foot on the ground. So along with observing, lifting, moving forward, putting down and pressing the ground, you will also perceive the lightness of the rising foot, the motion of the foot, and the heaviness of the descending foot, and then touching of the foot, which is the hardness or softness of the foot on the ground. So you can discover these elements when you mindful more and more. When you continue to practice walking meditation, you will come to realize that with every movement, there is also a noting mind and the awareness of the movement and there is lifting movements and also the mind that is aware of that lifting. Moreover, you will realize that both the movements and awareness arise and disappear in that moment. Later, you can discover the role of intention in affecting each movement. So in this way, you will make gradual progress in the practice when you mindful. And in due course of time, Yogi will attain the first stage of enlightenment and later with more continuous mindfulness and stronger concentration, you will attain higher stages of enlightenment, Sakaragami Mega, Nagami Mega and Arata Mega. So the development of mindfulness will be fully accomplished and mental defilements can no longer find their way into your mind. That is the ultimate goal of mindfulness. So in reality, although there are uh, 10 kinds of Ariyawasa, Full development of mindfulness is sufficient to ensure total commitment to them all. However, the Buddha is founded the other nine features of Ariyavasa for his disciple to understand the discourse comprehensively. In fact, the mindfulness is the key to his overall teaching. So you remember just before Buddha passed away, he summed up all his teaching in his last words in this way. Hanta Dani Bekwe Amandi Amiwa. Vayadama Sinkara Apamadena Sambadita. Here by now, Begus, I call upon you. The conditioned phenomena are impermanent in nature. Accomplish your training through mindfulness. Parents on their deathbed are likely to speak their last words to advise their children to follow for the rest of their life.
at one time, there was a man on his deathbed, spoke the words of advice to his family members for the whole night until his death. The last words of a parents are normally impressed on children's memory for the whole life. Sometimes their memories are so vivid that they often see their parents in their mind's eyes, giving those words of advice. So the children are most likely to follow the last words of their parents. In the same way as a parent does, Lord Buddha spoke the last words out of great compassion just before he passed away. Like the advice of parents on their deathbed, the last advice of the Lord Buddha should remain fresh forever in our minds and put it into action. Here by Bhikkhus, I call upon you. All conditioned phenomena are impermanent in nature. We are Dhamma Sinkara. So Buddha said, Bhikkhus, I'm now getting closer to the ultimate peacefulness, Brindivana, telling you my last words. His last words were, all conditioned phenomena are impermanent in nature. These words of the Buddha are very important for us, for the yogis, but we may take them for granted. Buddha emphasized that all the conditioned phenomena are impermanent, implying that there is nothing lasting as we think. Normally, we think our minds are always the same and have been thinking since our childhood days. In the same way, we think it is the same physical body that gradually grows bigger from a child to an adult. Our bodies are, we believe, the same as always, representing who we are. By contrast, Buddha declared that physical phenomena that people elusively identify as I or my, he or his, she or her, are arising and vanishing at every moment. Yet most of us feel as if we were the same individual forever. So all psychophysical phenomena come into existence when conditions are met. And they all disappear in nature immediately after arising. We can find nothing lasting or reliable in our minds and bodies. What is reliable? Reliable is only Nibbana, which is diametrically opposed to all conditioned phenomena. That is what we are practicing for. How to practice Lord Buddha? Buddha described it very briefly in this way. 
Apamadina Sampadita. Accomplish your training through the mindfulness. Apamada. These were the last words of the Buddha. We should not ignore them at all. Like words spoken by our parents on his or her deathbed. It is very important for all of us to recollect these words and put them into practice. In the commentary, it is said that although this instruction is very brief, it can cover the entire Pali Canon of the Lord Buddha, which is classified into three baskets. Tipitaka. Key words is apamada, heedfulness, or mindfulness. Given the last words of the Buddha, it is very clear that although the Buddha here described 10 features of the Ariyavasa, the abode of Nova ones, the mindfulness is the key factor. And by developing mindfulness, we will accomplish all 10 features of Ariyavasa. So when we establish the mindfulness described here as Apamada, we need four supports. Four supports are to use one thing and to endure another, to avoid still another, and to dispel stay another. So we are expected to use four necessity, robes, food, lodging, and medicine, and then patience to endure disagreeable things like unpleasant objects and unpleasant sensation. And don't go to the dangerous place. Avoid places where there are possible hazards and dangers. And the last one is to dispel unwholesome thoughts, sensual desire, ill will, etc. All kinds of unwholesome thoughts need to remove. So as mentioned in the outline, yogi are to abandon five factors. But you don't need to make any effort deliberately to abandon them because if you develop the mindfulness, the single gut, you will spontaneously abandon them. When the mindfulness is continuous, these five factors called mental hindrances cannot invade your mind. Among these five, how to overcome the first one, Kamichanda, sensual desire, sensual desire means death, Take a quick action to remove it. If we fail to remove the sensual desire, we will be in the house of Putujana, common people, in which we will be exposed to all kinds of dangers. And you remember the story of a monk, Tessa, who died with lingering attachment to his new robe and subsequently was reborn as a louse in that very robe. 
That is because monk Desa failed to dwell in the abode of noble ones, Ariyavasa, meaning he failed to be mindful of the attachment, Kamichanda. The story of Mang Desa is a good example of the dangers of attachment that drag him down to the animal worlds. However, fortunately, a week later, he passed on the celestial realms called Tawatensa because he let go of attachment to his rope and became mindful of his good deeds done as a monk. So to be reborn, uh, to be reborn of a man as a loss and then as a celestial being may be puzzled, may be baffling to common people, but quite understandable because it is all about the power of our mind. Depending on whether our mind is pure or impure, we would be reborn in a superior or inferior existence after death. One is reborn in a new existence immediately after death without any barrier of distance between the two lives. So sensual desire is indeed frightening, but we can suppress that desire through mindfulness As the instruction says, sensual desire means that take a quick action to remove it. Through the constant mindfulness, yogi will develop progressive stages of vipassana insight that we culminate, that we conclude the attainment of Sotapati Mega and become a string enterer. Sotapanna. In a stream enterer, the sensual desire is never strong enough for any transgression that can lead to woeful states. But sensual desire, Kamechana Nivarana, can be totally eliminated only when you become an anagami, a non returner. Yet, the finest form of desire, the subtle passions of material and immaterial existence, ruparaga and aruparaga, can be eradicated only when you are fully enlightened. So we we'll continue next week. We have to stop our discourse for today. By practicing vipassana meditation, by developing mindfulness more and more, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, smelling, etc., continuously and meticulously, may all yogis be liberated from all suffering, may all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. So sitting meditation for a few minutes.